Okay, so I've got my um, satellite image that I've uh, inserted and scaled previously. Um, now, if you want to have a look at the recording showing you how to do these things, go to uh, Google, type in my name, Judy Lee, and then it'll be the first link you'll see comes up there is my YouTube page. And then if you go to playlists and then have a look at, sorry, it's been a while since I've looked at this one. Ah, no, I think I've deleted the playlist. So you'll just have to go to the videos tab, so, and then scroll down through all my videos. And you're welcome to, of course, look at any of these. They're all there freely available. Um, so you'll see there are dozens of videos on Revit, uh, but then a lot on AutoCAD as well. Because as you'll probably tell, I like to start with AutoCAD just to make sure things are accurate. Yeah. I like what happens with Revit quite often. Uh, and so it's the CAD block, CAD 4 block C and block B and C project, uh, which you can look at. So going through the list there, you can see here a lot begin with that title. And going right back down here, you can see CAD block, and I'll put a link to this in, um, in your Moodle page as well, but this will show you how to get to all the videos. So CAD 4 block B and C, step one, insert and scale satellite image. I'll show you exactly what we did last week. Then step two, draw lines, uh, again, just like we did last week. And then step three is setting up X references, which is similar to the process I'm going to show you now. Uh, and then following on, we'll look at linking that into Revit to then start building up things in 3D a little bit. So the first step is just to get things set up in AutoCAD a little bit more. So I've got the satellite image scaled there. So what do I do? So I'll take your screens over just for a second. Okay, so I've got the uh, image that I've uh, scaled in a separate file, just so it's a bit easier to work with. Now I'm going to select it, right click, go to the um, clipboard panel, and then choose copy. So remember that's a different type of copy to the normal copy you have in AutoCAD, which you have on the modify panel there. That copy is just like copy in, in Revit. So when you do it with the under clipboard, yeah. it copies it to the clipboard, the Windows clipboard. Uh, so that works with copy and paste. So that's a different kind of copy. And, so, and you use it generally to copy things from one file to another. But you can also use it to copy it within a file or to copy it from uh, your model tab to, say, a, a page layout or something like that. So that's a useful option. Uh, so now I'm going to go to my, um, my other drawing where I've done quite a lot of line work and I have the um, satellite image inserted and scaled, hopefully, pretty close to the right size. And so then I'm going to right click there, go to clipboard, and then just choose paste. And I can place this over to one side. And now before I attempt to overlay them, I'm going to just start to look at some of the measurements. So maybe something that we know is um, fairly well defined is President Avenue there. So I'll do this on the right layer, I've got a road layer. And so I'm going to click on the line tool now and just draw a line by snapping to the line I've already drawn for the road, it comes straight across, and I'll draw another one over here. So again, hopefully you can see, once you start doing things like this, that uh, this would be quite a lot of work and very difficult to work with freely in Revit, but because AutoCAD allows you just to work with the geometry, it's, it's a bit easier. Um, and so there I've actually shown you something interesting. If you select an image, it'll give you this image panel, which can be a bit off-putting. It's kind of handy when you need these options, and we're going to use some of these in a minute. But uh, I want to get uh, the original tools back, 
And so with the image still selected, I can always go back to the Home tab and use any of these commands. So I'm going to click on the Move button. And then zooming in there, you can see there's the line for President Avenue, that dashed line there. And then I can just, after snapping onto the, or clicking onto that base point, come down and snap to the perpendicular point on the, uh, sorry, on the bottom line there. That's right, so that should line up fairly well. And uh, then we don't know what, where the other side of the street is on this image. But what I'm going to do now is draw some lines coming from these other points. So looking at the boundary there, and come back to the left. And you can see that's pretty close to what I worked out just by tracing off the image. So that's where I kind of guessed that the boundary was. In reality, it's a little bit higher. So now I can move that line. And that is actually on my car parking layer. So it wasn't actually meant to be the boundary, it's just the outside of the car park. I don't have a layer for the boundary yet, so I'm going to go and make a layer, just clicking on the layers, layer properties button to bring up my layer manager. And then I'll uh, go to new layer. So zero boundary, be the layer name, colour, green is fairly standard for things like boundaries, and then I'll go to line type, so clicking on the continuous there to bring up the select line type option, and then load, and a good line type to use for boundaries is one that has actually a similar name, border. Notice you've got all of these ACAD ISO um, line types. And you might remember last week I said ISO is usually good because it means international standards organisations and uh, organisation and you know basically most of the world except for America is um, part of that and they uh, work with metric generally. But unfortunately those are no good for metric generally. So don't use those ACAD ISO line types. Um, but this one here, border, works just fine. Now the funny thing is, once you've loaded it, you've got to select it again. Just remember that. So now if I click OK, you can see it's going into the line type there. Uh, so a common issue people have when they set line types is getting the size uh, of, the, of the, the dashes to be right. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'm going to close this now. Um, I haven't made the layer current. You might remember you can always use the button up here to set current, or do you remember the other way to set current? Double yep, double click, that's right, it's on. Yep, double click on that little icon. So there are two ways. I'm going to show you another way though. If I close that, I've forgotten to set the current layer, not a problem. I can simply click onto this layer panel and choose it from there. Oh, now an interesting thing there, notice it's gone into the wrong part of the list. Usually it'll reset itself, but if it doesn't, what it's doing is picking up the way it is in here. So you can just open this up again, and then just click on that name heading a couple of times just to get it back in order. Okay, so what I'll show you there is that you can choose a layer from the list here, and it'll set it as the current layer. But if there's something selected, so I'm going to click onto this line now, and now you can see this panel is showing me the layer of that object that I've selected. And if I choose a different layer there, it will change the layer of that object. So that's an easy way of changing an object from one layer to another. And then escape to deselect. Now zooming right in, it's going to show you that it is the right line type, but they're really small. And like I said, that's a common issue people have when they're setting line types in AutoCAD, getting the size to be what you want. And there are lots of different complicated methods. Sometimes people will show you this way, going to the line type panel up here, going to other, go to show details, and then they'll put in a global scale factor there, which will scale it up. Um, that works, but that's kind of the old school way. It's not necessary anymore. There's a newer way, which is generally better, and that is to use the scale setting down here. So you've got these preset scales. If I choose 1 to 100, it's going to do a regen by typing RE and 
a bit hard to see until I zoom in, but you can see now fairly clearly that that is bigger. Now, still not big enough, but it's, it's a lot better than it was. Uh, what scale do you think this might need to be in your um, drawing set if it's on an A3 page? Yeah, at least 1 to 200. I'd say the site analysis might even be 1 to 500 because you'd be showing a fairly big area. You'd be showing things outside of your site as well. So we'll need both of those scouts. We definitely need 1 to 200, but, but again, probably 1 to 500 as well. So I'm going to go into the uh, layer pack, the, uh, sorry, the, um, it's called annotative scale, that scale button, basically. Kind of like the one in, order in, in Revit, but works a little bit differently. Uh, so here I'm going to go to custom, and then go to add, put in a new name, 1 colon 200, and then change the drawing units there to 200, leave that on 1 on the left, click OK, go to move down, put it in the right spot, and then add again, and 1 colon 500, and then So now I've got those scales done. Go OK. And I'm going to choose 1 to 500. RE to regen. And you can see now I've got bigger dashes. So maybe 1 to 200 is a happy medium there. But when we need 1 to 500, we've got that ready to go as well. OK, so then I'm going to keep going with the um, set out line. So I can draw another boundary line from here. Over to the left making sure that ortho is still on and you can see now where that's turned out. So this is basically an imaginary boundary. The, the site for this um, campus is, is much larger than, uh, than what you're going to work with. But that, that should be right for the back. And then I'll draw some more lines over here. Now, you can see it's not straight. This is what I was talking about last week. When you're working with angles like this in Revit, it can be difficult. You can sketch them, but if you need to type in an exact angle, which is really what you should be doing when you're working off a survey, then it's extremely difficult in Revit. Unless you want to use the, even if you tried using the bearings option to type in boundary dimensions. Anyway, that's the method they give you to work off a, a survey. We all worked off survey measurements before, you must have seen them there. So in any office, that's where you begin a project. If you go and work in an architectural office, they'll give you a site survey with boundary mm -hmm. measurements, boundary measurements including uh, bearings or the angles, and you need to know how to type those in. And it's really embarrassing if you try to do it in Revit, you find it may seem easy, but it won't work properly because it's set to work with a different system to what, what we're using. So that's really one of the main reasons I've been showing you how to do it with AutoCAD, just to get all this set up in the right way. And now you can see there, it's telling me the angle, pretty close to 91 degrees. And I'll show you how to set the units. I've just typed in units. Before I do that, I just pressed escape to make sure there were no commands running. Units. Uh, enter will bring up the unit setting and I'm just going to add in uh, some extra decimal points for the angle precision. And I'll click OK. And then now if I go to draw a line, and down to the left, you can see there it is 90.74. Okay, so that's if you want to work with decimal degrees, but if you've seen bearings, how do you think they're normally written? Are they given as decimal degrees? Or do they do it in another way? No? Okay, so you might have seen angles where they've got the first measurement, the angle, and then the angle symbol, and then you'll have another measurement and then an apostrophe, and then another measurement and then two apostrophes. So degrees, minutes, and seconds is what that means. That's how survey measurements are usually given. So when you get a survey, and again, this is the first thing you'll do in any office, you'll have to work off a survey. Um, you have to work with those measurements in degrees, minutes and seconds. So 
So, just typing in units again, and now I'm going to change the angle type measurement to degrees, minutes, seconds. And I'm going to change the position there so it shows not just minutes, but also seconds. So that's the third option there. Uh, you'll see later that surveys are actually using clockwise measurements, so you can also turn that option on. But I'm not going to use that because we, we don't really need that, by the way. So now I'm going to go yet again, draw a line, and this time on the same point, I'm going to come down. Notice how the measurements come up in that format. So it is 90 degrees. I'm just going to get that as close as I can. So 90 degrees, 49 minutes, 47 seconds. And we should know that, uh, that boundary dimension. Unfortunately, the other one is, uh, again, not, uh, not specified with a bare one. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to click a point there. Oh, now this one's at a slight angle too. That's interesting. Yeah, we're going to have to do that too. All right, so let's just get this one across. All right, so, so I want my image to come down a bit, so I'm going to just, uh, well, I'll do it differently to before. So before I clicked on the image first, and then clicked move. Remember, by clicking on the image, then I can go back to the Home tab and click Move. But if I do it the other way, if I click Move first, then I can select the image, and it saves me a step. I don't have to switch tabs. Press Enter now. And so I'm just going to pick it up on that point there, which should be the corner of the boundary. And then take it down perpendicular to the line I've set up. And then I can draw another line now from that point. And let's have a look at this boundary. So, yeah, so nothing straight. And this is good, actually. It's a nice, realistic boundary where things usually are not straight. So there, coming down, you can see the measurement, 74 and something. We don't need it to be exactly on the line because remember, this image is not proportional. So we're just using it as a rough guide. So it is... Uh, definitely important to get that measurement typed in. And so it's uh, 74,500. So 74. And then do you remember the symbol for angle? You know what I can? So the less than symbol. Okay, so it's easier to remember because to enter x, y coordinates, you put in a comma. To make it an angle, instead you just do shift and then the comma key, which gives you the less than. Okay, so it's really important to look at the angle there, and that's really what I'm trying to show you. So the angle is 90 degrees, 45 minutes and 22 seconds. Okay, so... I'm going to be shuffling this morning, so I'm going to just start jotting some of these things down. Okay, so 94... Oh, sorry, 90 degrees... 45 minutes and 22 seconds. Okay, so to type that in, angle symbol, shift and then the uh, comma key, which gives you the less than symbol. And then to type in an angle, it's the angle first and then the letter D. 45, apostrophe, 22, inverted commas. So shift and then the apostrophe key. Okay, so it's the only way to do it, unfortunately. You have an option to enter degrees, minutes and seconds in Revit, but again, it doesn't work in Australia. So you don't have an option, unfortunately. Um, and let's see, I've just missed something there. It's giving me an error. Oh, it's gone up. Okay, that was clever. So, all right, so now what's happened there, I wasn't thinking about my angles. Which way are angles measured? I was thinking clockwise, because again I'm used to working off a survey. So angles by default in any program are measured anti-clockwise. Just like in maths, you measure anti-clockwise unless it's otherwise specified. So I'm going to undo that. The line went up because I'm measuring again anti-clockwise. I want to go anti 
I want to go clockwise. So I can type the same measurement. 7, 4, uh, 500. Angle, minus 90 D. Make sure I put the angle symbol in there. Minus 90 D, 45 minutes, 22 seconds. Oh, I didn't put minus 50, right, that's fine. Okay, so 74, 500. Angle, minus 90. Yeah, so the angle symbol is disappearing. But that's right, so 45 uh, minutes, 22 seconds. Third time lucky, there we go. Okay, so you can see there the lines followed what's on the drawing. But come out a bit lower, and we know that it just has to do that. So, so that's okay. And then, what I might let you do is just assume that the um, the other boundaries are the same angle. So, if you can draw a line from the corner point here, following this angle. Now, you can see there it's trying to snap sometimes to a different point. So, you just need to make sure it doesn't. Do that when you're measuring your angle. So it's 0 degrees, 39 minutes, 38 seconds. And we know the boundary dimension there is 38,600. So it's going to be at uh, 38,600. And you can even type in that, uh, that measurement that you can see is coming up there. Instead of making it uh, negative, it'll be... Positive three five nine degrees twenty two minutes and twenty one seconds. So type that in. So uh, you can see that that's gone in already. Right, so that's a really handy option. If you move your line to the angle you want, it will pick that up. So sometimes you don't have to type it in. Enter. And there we are. Now, to get the other line to be the same angle, I can simply copy the line I've already drawn by selecting it and click Copy, snap to the endpoint there, and then snap it to the point on the other side. And again, with this one, I might let you just use the same, uh, same angle as the one above. So you can simply copy that line from the top. And just trust me on this one, every employer that you'll go to will expect that you can do this because you need to be able to set your building out accurately from the boundary, otherwise the builders can't start building. And the purpose of your drawings is to give the builders the information they need to, uh, to actually construct what you've designed. So, uh, so if they can't do this, then, then nothing, nothing can go ahead. And... Uh, Again, you won't have often um, a lot of complicated measurements to enter because you'll get it from a survey, but they'll have the measurements written in that format and you need to be able to then work off, off of those. Okay, so just going a bit further, this line here you can see was just rough to work out where the, um, the back was, so I'm going to move that so that you can see now it's a little bit further down. But... Okay, a couple of things here. I'm going to just start by maybe copying this across to get an idea how that's going to fit over the um, satellite image. So I'm just going to, with a window, select those. And notice I selected left to right to go over the, um, the lines, but not to select the image. I'm going to click the copy button and then snap to the, uh, well, it doesn't really matter, to a point near it. And then turn ortho on so that it just comes straight across. And visually then I can try and get an idea how that should fit. So we can see here, well, so the fence may not follow the boundary exactly. You can see that the, the angle of the fence is a little bit different, but that doesn't mean the boundary's wrong. Often the fences on, on properties built in this era don't follow the boundary exactly. So on my property that I'm working on at the moment, the, um, the side fence is about 400 mil off the boundary at the back and about 
800 mil off the boundary at the other end. So I've got an extra, you know, several square metres of the neighbour's property included in my site, which I can't build on. So that's, that's fairly normal. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this across anyway, and you can see then it does fit fairly well uh, otherwise. So I'm just going to put that near the boundary on the right. And so you can see then it lines up pretty well with the edge of the car park here. And then you've got another line, looking back at this image, which is essentially the driveway. And then the buildings here. So you could also start marking those out and then transferring them across. We could just see visually that's going to fit fairly well. Um, and then the final step, before you bring it into Revit, you could look at just moving the image across on top of the satellite image. Um, but before you do that, you should set up some layers. So I'm going to go and make a layer. So I've got a layer for the first image. And I'm going to make that image um, satellite. And then I'm going to make another layer, image uh, contours. OK, so then just made it a different colour. And now I can select that new image. Remember, it brings up the image tab, so you just need to switch back to the home tab to get the layers panel, and you can choose your layer from there. And I'll just change it for that. That easy. And then, you know, once you do copy it across or move it across on top of the satellite image, you can then easily turn those images on and off, clicking on the light bulbs in the list there. So that'll be a good initial setup and then I'll go through in a minute how to bring that into, into Revit.